I am still terrified of these roads. If God defined, learned my lesson. Many people have God defines because they weren't aware of it. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, quite recently I made a video where I talked about the things that you should know when traveling Italy by train this summer. I've updated you on all the news and all the things that uh, have changed this year. And today I've decided to continue this topic a little bit, but to focus on all the things you should know if you're planning to drive a car in Italy. Whether you are going on a road trip this summer or you plan to rent a car and explore Italy uh, in this way which I personally love I think it's an absolutely gorgeous idea because this way you can get to all of the smaller places you know hidden gems better uh, but there are a few things that you should know to avoid any mishaps and unpleasant surprises that could taint your holiday and today I'll be talking about all of the things that I encountered personally when I had no clue what I was doing uh, both as a tourist before moving here and as a new expat so yeah guys I just want to share some personal experience with you and some things that you should absolutely know before driving in Italy before we begin don't forget to subscribe and let's get started the first thing that I wanted to address today are the highways also called the autostrade in Italy so basically we're talking about the toll uh, road uh, the freeways, the highways, call them whatever you want, but these are the paved roads with the speed limit of a maximum 130 kilometers per hour. Differently to some other European countries where you enter the country and you pay for the roads once and all the roads are covered, in Italy you will have to pay for each separate road and actually for each chunk of the road that you've taken. So say if it's um, the highway connecting Milan to Rome, for example, but you're going from Milan to Florence, you will have to pay for this part of the road from Milan to Florence. You won't have to pay for the entire road, but you'll have to pay upon exiting the highway based on uh, how big a chunk of road that you've made. Essentially, you are taking a ticket upon entering the highway and then you'll pay it upon your exit. Uh, guys, pay attention because there are several exits and there are those that accept only cash payment, then there are those that accept both card and cash payment, and then there are the telepass enters and exits as well. These are really hard to miss because they have this huge yellow signs on top of them. However, sometimes tourists miss them accidentally and this can result in you getting there, not being able to pass and then not being able to leave it because there would be other cars behind you. These telepass entries and exits are reserved for those who have a kind of a pass, i.e. the toll is built directly from their bank account. But I've seen numerous situations when the cars, usually foreign cars, uh, enter there because there are usually no queues for obvious reasons, cars just pass by and then they create a huge, huge queue. You know, these things happen, of course, but just try to uh, see in advance which exit you should choose. Don't try to enter the highways through telepass. You won't be able to do so, even though you'll see numerous cars passing there. Something similar has happened to me when I was still a tourist and it was one of my first times driving in Italy. I did not go into the telepass entry, but I tried to exit through the cash only uh, exit while I had to pay with cards so yeah I created a little bit of a queue but luckily the cars were moving and reversing back one to one, one by one and I managed to escape but guys this is not a, an optimal situation trust me you do not want to find yourself in this situation so uh, yeah check uh, twice before choosing your exit. Now there is a great, great way to avoid these situations in Italy and it's not only by subscribing to my channel and watching my videos, although this will definitely help you do better than most tourists, but I'm talking about something different today. If you're planning to drive in a new country, it's always better to be prepared to avoid any misadventures like the parking tickets or the situations on the highways that happened to me and the tons of other tourists. My partners at Tripiamo have got you covered. They created an innovative and interactive guide to driving in Italy along with some other countries. And it is actually more than a guide. There are about 20 interactive video lessons and you can even try driving there virtually before coming. They cover everything you need to know about driving here, starting from the basics like how to refuel your car or how to approach the roundabouts because the rules for the roundabouts 
learned about are actually differ from country to country and then progressively they move towards more complicated topics like reading the road signs or driving on the highways. They even have a dedicated lesson to driving a motorbike in Italy. In case you want to test out that colorful Vespas, the guide is super easy to use and after completing all the lessons and the virtual practice you get a PDF with all the essential information so you can have it with you at all times. These guides were created by travelers and experts like you and me who know what it's like to be driving abroad but at the same time the Tripiamo guides are the only driving guides certified by the local driving schools so you don't have to worry about the authenticity of the information provided. Get your guide to driving in Italy with an exclusive discount of 10% by using my code dramatically expatic June 2024 but hurry up because the discount is only available for a limited time so grab your guide guys and drive safely with Tripiamo enjoying the scenery instead of worrying about what to do next I've already talked about this topic in my other video by the way guys if you want even more information check it out I'll leave you a link up here but there is something that can be said again and again about the ZTL beware the zona del traffico limitato the limited traffic zones these zones guys are restricted areas where not everyone can enter usually they cover the historical centers most definitely wherever you go the historical center will be a ZTL area so you are not allowed to enter there unless you meet a certain criteria or you have a special permit normally the electric and hybrid cars can enter these areas but only after obtaining a special permit and all of the foreign cars of course will not have this permit but if you are staying in a hotel or an airbnb in the city center inside the ztl do not worry you can ask your host to obtain this permit for you to communicate uh, the information about your car to all of the necessary offices and then you can enter it happened to me i was super worried because do you guys by the way do you remember uh, our vlogs from umbria from last year actually while filming those vlogs we stayed in a small town inside the ztl area i will leave you a link up here to my playlist from umbria in case you want to check it out but i was so worried about entering the ztl area in this small town our host uh, communicated all of the information to the city hall and he told us that we could enter I was still super anxious I'm just anxious normally <laughs> you know about these things but luckily everything went well nothing happened because he promptly uh, communicated everything and we were able to drive there safely without getting a fine and the fines for entering the ZTL without the permit guys can go up to more than 300 euros it happened to me once uh, during my first year of living here I just completely missed the ZTL sign and entered the city center entered this area got the fine learned my lessons i'm now extra careful when looking for the signs of the ztl a lot of road signs as well of course but that's not all when it comes to ztl if it wasn't complicated enough just as it is guys in milan for example besides the regular ztl area that covers the historical center and works as usual a huge huge part of the city is now covered with the so-called zona b and in that area guys most cars cannot enter you need to go to a special website to check if your car can enter if you have the italian car plate i'm not sure how it works with the foreign car plates but just know that all electric and hybrid vehicles can enter there at all times without problems so you know guys being sustainable seems like the only way to go i have talked uh, about it in more detail on my patreon page telling you more about the zona b in milan and how to navigate it who can enter who cannot enter so check the link in the description box if you want to learn more and also support our work and also guys thank you so much to everyone who's supporting us because your support is crucial and you help us make even more exciting travel logs for you and sharing this amazing tips and this channel would have not been possible without your help and your support so guys once again i want to remind you to subscribe to my channel first and also if our content helps you to plan your trips and navigate life in italy and just you know brings italy closer to you and makes you fall in love with this country uh, as much as we love it do consider donating and supporting our channel either through the thanks button down below right near the like button or buy a link in the description box where you can buy coffee for me and my team thank you so much once again
Now, speaking of the regional roads, all the roads that are not the highways, they have the speed limit of uh, 70 km per hour usually, sometimes it's 90 km per hour, rarely. But these are the smaller roads that will take you to more remote places, smaller towns, smaller villages that are clearly not served by the highways. And in that case, guys, you will not have to pay. You will move slower, of course, it will take you a bit longer to get there. But very, very often you will have amazing scenery around you, especially if you're driving somewhere in Tuscany, for example, and you can admire the Tuscan hills, especially at Golden Hour. I absolutely love these regional roads, especially during summer. But keep in mind that some of them can be super, super narrow. Then, guys, since there are locals who use them a lot and they are used to these roads, they may um, be quite quick on these narrow roads and they may speed a little bit over the limit. Just keep that in mind. Be extra careful because for uh, the first time driver on these roads, this can be absolutely terrifying. I am still terrified of these roads even after all these years. So yeah, just don't speed too much. Do be very careful, pay extra attention. If you see a car coming at you, maybe stop a little bit and let them pass. That's my best advice, personal advice. I'm not sure if it's professional, guys, but this is my best personal advice to you. Last but not least, there is a thing in Italy that are the local regulations. What I mean is that while in most places the rules will be the same, some cities and towns may have their own local regulations. I'm talking about Bologna right now because uh, in most cities the speed limit within the city limits is 50 km per hour but in Bologna guys attention you will find many streets that have the speed limit of 30 km per hour now. Uh, this has been this um, new thing of 2024, a very recent thing. Many people have got the fines because they weren't aware of it. While the city centers in all cities usually have the speed limit of 30 km per hour in Bologna, it's now not only the city center, but also some streets that are located quite far away from the city center. I live in a residential area and there are some streets that have the same 30 km per hour our speed limit there too so you cannot of course be prepared for every single local regulation and that's why I highly recommend you to be extra attentive to the road signs and read them carefully and pay attention to them whenever you're driving so you can avoid some mishaps. And that's it. I hope that this video was helpful and useful and that you're gonna use these tips guys because uh, driving in a new country of course can be intimidating at first but then, you know, you'll get a hold of it. I promise that it will be all right if you prepare well. I personally think that it's better be safe than sorry. So it's definitely better to prepare well in advance if you're going to drive in Italy or in any other country. And having said that, I once again remind you to subscribe. Please don't forget to like and comment this video because I really want to know what you think. Tell me about your experience of driving in Italy. Also, don't forget to hit the bell button down below so you get the notifications of all the upcoming videos. Thank you so much, guys. Stay tuned for more and I will see you next week.